Hi, I'm Hamza Imran and I'm a design engineer at Imamba Private Limited. Today I'm going to uh, give you an introduction to FreeRTOS and uh, uh, and going to show you a Hello World program using Arduinos. Uh, basically, I'm going to make a series of videos explaining you the basic concepts of FreeRTOS, which is uh, one of the most famous uh, uh, RTOS options available um, and are is being community uh, driven. Uh, for for this series of uh, uh, tutorials, I'm going to use uh, Arduino Mega. Arduinos are basically the most common uh, development boards available in the market. You can use uh, any of the Arduinos for uh, for following this course. But um, uh, as I have Arduino Mega with me, I'm uh, going to give you the demo on uh, on using this board. So let's get started. Starting with setting up Arduinos and uh, installing the free Arduinos library and uh, uh, for that here is a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, you uh, Throughout this course I will be updating this repository. It's my repository on GitHub. It's, uh, it's github slash engr hamza ali imran slash free Arduinos Arduinos. Uh, you will find uh, lecture slides here in this folder and uh, uh, this, this for source folder contains the uh, codes which I'm going to use for explaining concepts. So we'll find the link in the description. Let's get started. So first of all for using Arduinos you need an Arduino IDE. In this video I'm not going to explain how to install it. I have made a separate video for that. Uh, the good thing about Arduino IDE is they are uh, cross-platform so you can use any of uh, uh, the operating system uh, that includes Windows, Linux, or Mac. Uh, in my case, I'm using Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution, but entirely everything is going to be the same no matter whatever operating system you use. So um, the getting started guide is here. I'm going to demonstrate that in the in this video. First of all, open Arduino IDE. Well, uh, it is the version 1.8.13. Um, I'm not sure, is it the latest one? Because uh, usually we don't get the latest versions for Linux very soon. Okay, so first of all in order to install the library you need to go to sketch then from there you need to go to uh, manage libraries so the man library manager will be opened then find the free artos library uh, by typing free artos keyword and you have to install this one this library by Richard Berry uh, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing the name correct for installing any of the libraries, you first have to go to the library and click the install button. It's going to be installed in a few seconds, depending upon your internet speed. Uh, after it's going to be installed, it uh, uh, after the completion of the installation process, installed keyword would be written here. You can see it's already written here in my case because I have already installed it. Okay, so after installing the library, you may, uh, in order to check, or you may try the examples provided by um, the developers. Uh, for that, you need to go to the examples inside the file uh, and then you go to the menu named free autos you will find a couple of examples here I'm not going to use their own examples but you can play with them um, I would recommend you to um, if you are interested I would recommend you to uh, explore this one the first one that's uh, blink underscore uh, analog read it's basically creating two tasks and um, one is blinking the LED another one is uh, reading the analog sensor value well, for this, following this video, you don't need to inst uh, have any sort of sensor. You just need an Arduino board. Okay, so let's copy the first code uh, from my repository. Its name is Hello World, and then um, I will going to explain each and every part of this code, and uh, I'm going to explain the concepts of uh, task and uh, scheduling a bit. Okay, so let's create a new file. now okay for following this course I'm assuming that you're already familiar with the Arduino IDE and uh, uh, a bit of its programming uh, but anyhow uh, you don't need to have too much experience uh, 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 I'm going to explain uh, the basic things right um, so let's get started okay so <clears throat> first of all what are tasks so basically the task of an operating system is to provide you abstraction from the hardware right in the case of 
um, embedded systems, for example. Not even just in the case of embedded systems, but let's talk about embedded systems. For example, you have to perform two different uh, tasks. One is that you have to sense a value from a sensor. Moreover, another task you want to do is to blink an LED or do some sort of actuation. Okay, what free RTOS gives you a capability is to to write these two modules in a very separate function, and then free RTOS is going to schedule these for particular time slots. So it's going to share the hardware resources with the one task for some time slot and after it's going to shift the control of a hardware to the other task for some time in this way it's going to schedule both of the tasks and it's going to share the resources both of the tasks and both of the tasks uh, are going to run concurrently you may you may feel that they are running in parallel but they will not be running in parallel, but but it would make you feel like these things are running in parallel. This is this is common to any operating system, uh, any general purpose operating system. For example, in the case of Linux, what it does is it schedules the tasks. Uh, in the case of Linux, we call it processes, and different processes are running on the same processor. There's one processor, there's one RAM, there's 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 just one hardware, but that's been shared among different processes right you may see that i'm running this arduino ide i'm running this recording app application i'm i'm running this microsoft edge uh and then there's a pdf uh, file viewers also uh, running here all these things are running and it seems like they're running in parallel well they're not running in parallel what's going on is linux is scheduling these tasks for very small time duration right so it seems like a lot of things are running in parallel and the hardware is being shared among them so I can do more than one things in at the same time. You can do the very similar thing with Ar Arduinos using free RTOS, right? Okay, now there's one thing that what is an RTOS, real-time operating system? Well, they, they are basically two types of operating systems. One are called general purpose operating systems. Other are called free, sorry, not free. RTOS, real-time operating systems. So general purpose operating system in the case, for example, Linux, their target is to have good throughput, right? So by good throughput, I mean they, they're interested in running uh, multiple tasks at the same time and giving, and giving the time period, same time slots to all the tasks, all the processes. But in the case of embedded systems, we do have such kind of work, such kind of tasks, which are time critical. For example, in the case of, uh, for example, there's a microcontroller embedded in a car. That's job is to detect that whether an accident happens or not. And after uh, uh, detecting this, it, its job is to open the um, airbag. So if we don't open the airbag within some very smart time uh, deadline, that application that module would fail its its need would be useless right and we would have a very devastating effect so in such cases giving hardware source to high priority tasks so as to value the deadlines is important in such cases real time operating systems come into play and their schedulers are designed in such a way that they 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 take care of the deadlines right okay free atos is basically a free real time operating system and it's among the most common one okay so let's get started with the task in um how to declare a task etc etc so in case of uh, 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 the code as far as code is concerned um to create any tasks, tasks are basically simple functions. They are very similar to C functions, right? You write, so let's as, let's say the first task which I created here is, uh, its job is to blink the LE, right? So in the case of this task, so in the case of task, um, we never return the function. So uh, the type is void. 
and then inside the parameter is a void type pointer so basically uh, you can pass any type of uh, parameter here so if, if you are not sure as you're not sure here at this part you make it white okay um, uh, you may see that I have made the pin number 13 as output right here not in the setup function if you are familiar with Arduino uh, programming so um, it's basically a convention to declare the do the hardware related configuration inside the task for which that configuration is required so in this task I'm going to play the LED which is attached to pin number 13 in Arduino's I'm making this pin output here inside this task moreover I'm setting the baud rate to 9600 inside this task because I'm also going to print something on the serial monitor okay so task never returns so they the task which you want to do uh, the the work which you want to do over and over again which is typically written inside the loop function uh, uh, you are going to write that inside an infinite loop right in this case I'm blinking the uh, setting the LED status to high and low and also printing a string again and again right okay uh, you may write a while one here okay but you will find that it's a convention to use for loop for infinite loop okay the same thing is here in the SAR task 2 uh, first I have declared have done the hardware related configuration here I have declared the baud rate set the baud rate to 9600 and then I'm writing I'm just printing a string that uh, hi I'm from task 2 okay there's one more point to be highlighted here that I'm not uh, I am giving the delay after setting the pin to high and low and I'm not calling the delay function of Arduino's I'm calling an API I'm making an API call to delay function of free RTOS right okay uh, uh, well basically there's a difference between the functionality of both of the fun delay functions and um, I'm going to explain that in a separate video but for the time being you can take it like in the case of free RTOS based applications you should never use the delay function of Arduino's moreover you uh, in this case or in the case of this function the parameters which you pass is similar to that function you give the time duration in microseconds here uh, I'm dividing it by this um, variable this parameter because this is going to take care of uh, the frequencies of the crystal attached to the timer so you don't need to get into the complexities of that uh, for the programmers perspective you may consider it like dividing this value by this parameter is going to make your codes pretty stable right it's going to ensure that this function or this task gets a delay of one second at this spot okay it will ensure that okay after declaring these uh, writing the code of these two functions you have to create a task handler for both of these functions both of these tasks I should not use a term function okay what they do I explain that uh, later on okay inside the setup function you are going to create the tasks okay this is an interesting part so to in order to create a task first what you do in free our tasks you first write the code of the task which are basically the functions then you create tasks making an API call to create X task create and then you link that create task API call to that particular function okay and when when the scheduler starts executing the task is going to call those functions okay, this is very similar to mm, creating threads and running them in C++11 and uh, and later on if you have done uh, programming in that okay so X task create is a API call first you pass the parameter which is basically the name of this function right task next you give it a name that is suitable for humans to remember okay I just call it blink next is the stack size which you want to assign to this task okay this is basically the amount of RAM you you want the task to uh, the task to use I give it just 128 okay next this these are the parameters which if you want you can pass to the task next is the priority right I randomly give it two. well uh, priorities as the name suggests is which task is more important and I have briefly explained what is the significance of a priority in the case of embedded systems next you give the task handler so task handler considering from a programmer's perspective in the beginning you don't need to get into it, its details technical details you just need to create, remember one thing that you create one task handler for one particular task okay likewise I created one for the first task okay so then you close the function call here the API call 
same is the thing that has been done for the second task okay after the creation of the tasks scheduler is automatically going to at this spot the scheduler will start and it's going to schedule the task infinitely okay so the code flow is not going to get into the loop function right but in order to compile the code you need to have a loop function which is going to stay empty for free or toss related applications okay so now let's get started with the um, uploading the code and uh, i will give you the demo then okay so okay let me come back to the camera okay so here's uh, let me turn this blink thing off yeah so here's the board okay well you may <laughs> be wondering that it doesn't seem like a mega but in fact it is a modified version of arduino mega chip is same uh, the only difference is the difference is that it's in black color more of a instead of having that usb type a i'm having a micro usb port which which is easy because um, it's pretty easy to get such wires right first of all i connect it to my system right now at this stage i'm assuming that you you are familiar with uploading the code uh, to arduinos okay but anyhow if you are not i'm going to make a video on that and uh, uh, you can follow that one okay so i simply connected to my system and i have connected this to uh, my computer okay now going to arduino ide the first thing to check is to check your port which is already set to arduino mega second is to select the port and then click the upload button which is going to first save the code in our case then uh, compile the code and then it's going to upload the code to the arduino board let's wait for that and when it's uploading is completed i will come back okay so uploading is done and uh, arduino is blinking with one second okay so let me show you the serial monitor alongside with uh, Hmm, it's not shifting to half of the screen alongside with Arduino's LED okay so this is the time slot okay you can turn it off if you want right you are getting the hello world from both of the tasks more of uh, if I move back to the camera let me show you the Arduino is blinking right good so this for uh, this is for it um uh, lastly i would like to thank you to watch the video and this is the first video which i'm making uh, so i would like you to give me the feedback um, i would love to have it for listen it from your side and please suggest me how i can improve my videos thank you very much allah hafiz